Hi guys and welcome back to Yashi. Today with another video about inflation. Uh, this is a video I tend to do every single month. I skipped last month because I got very hurt. Uh, I didn't post as much. Uh, I'm finally back uh, and let's see where it goes. So we had inflation going down in the past couple of months. Uh, the Federal Reserve has still been increasing interest rates until the last update. Uh, the last one was 0.25%. We're officially around the 5% federal funds rate. Uh, 5 to 5.25%, I believe that is the number. Where are we going now? What are we expected to see? Is there any data that we can see that is more recent than what the Fed has that can help us predict uh, what the next CPI report will look like? Before we start, we gotta look at where we are right now. If we go on the CPI um, charts that the government releases, the US Bureau of Labor Statistics releases every single month, uh, this is the one we saw from April 2023. All categories inflation was 4.9%, so definitely declining compared to this 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9% we saw in the previous couple of months uh, from 2022 on. What was the inflation without the food and energy? It was 5.5%. Why am I looking at this number too? Because the Federal Reserve likes to see the inflation both as, as a total and without food and energy prices as food and energy fluctuate more and they're less dependent on interest rates, which is what the, the Federal Reserve can control. So this is the current state. We definitely have a declining situation if you look at the trend of the past couple of months. So the question is, what can we find that could help us think about uh, what to expect in the next CPI report. This is data from uh, end of May and June, the one I will show you. So it might not reflect on the May report completely, but it could reflect, uh, for example, the June one. We're gonna see if we can find also some May report data too. First of all, even though we just looked at everything except for food and energy, we're gonna look at food and energy. Why am I looking at these? I mean, food is what we need to live, so it's important to look at, but energy, which is mostly gasoline in this case, I like to look at it because it can, let's say, have an impact on many other industries that are part of this green box here. Because if gasoline is more expensive, so will be the cost of transportation, so will be the cost of certain products that derive from petroleum, etc., etc. We gotta look at gas prices first. Today's gas prices as of June 7 are 3.553 across all of America on average. Okay, we're under $4, which is way, way, way a year ago. Funny thing, a year ago we were almost at $5. So in this case, if we were looking at one year ago, we are in deflation territory, not even at slowing inflation. This is actual deflation. Very good to see. What about diesel? Diesel is what affects transportation prices. And same thing, the trend is negative. We're in deflation in this case, which is good to know. Let's look at food. Generally speaking, if we look at all the food prices out there, and this is international food prices, so all of the world, not just America, by looking at FAO, the FFPI, which is the FAO Food Price Index, averaged 124.3 points in May 2023 down 3.4 points from April and much as, as much as 35 points from the all-time high reach in March 2022. So again, if you look at the chart here, the trend is in deflation territory, negative territory. Not only is the cost of food not increasing, it is decreasing, which is good. However, if we look at more details, we see that some factors like the cereal price index have been going down, but other factors such as meat prices have been going up just a little bit compared to last month, but still lower compared to a year ago. This is meat, which is good to see. We still are in deflationary territory if you look at the year over year trend. Month over month, it could go up. Still positive to see. This data is from May, so this, although it's international, could be reflected in the US CPI report that we will see, we'll see next. It's not assured because, of course, US is different from the rest of the world, but it's definitely a large market. Energy price index. This is any kind of energy prices. Again, the trend is negative compared to a year ago. This is an index, this is not the actual price. The index was at 173 a year ago. Right now, it's at 96. Not saying we lost everything in terms of prices, but this is a very sharp decline and the trend is still going down after an uptick that we saw in April. So the May trend is negative, is deflationary, good to know. 
Rents. This is another very important, let's say, key point that the Federal Reserve looks at, which is rental. The problem of rents, uh, according to the Bureau of the CPI, the Labor Bureau, is that normally they calculate it with surveys. In this case, uh, we have a company that looks at some more data, actually looks at data, and here we have a good chart showing the situation. We saw an uptick from 2020 all the way to 2022, but uh, after mid-year last year, the trend has been going down. We still have an uptick uh, if we look at month over month, uh, and uh, rents naturally increase 0.5% month over month, uh, price up 0.9% year over year. So, what does this mean? Month over month, uh, we're still going up in rent, uh, why? Because there's still the problem of supply and demand. The builders are not building enough. Uh, people need a house to rent or to buy. There's nothing to rent or to buy. Prices are going up. However, we're looking, again, before we're looking uh, at the other two, let's say, data points, we're looking at deflation. In this case, we're, we're looking at still inflation, but a much lower inflation. Preferably, we're looking at the 2% max inflation. In this case, 0.9% inflation is, uh, this is now, Half a, half a year, actually this is year over year, it is actually under a 2% mark, which is a good number to see. I would have rather seen a negative inflation, so deflation and rent prices, because they're too high for me, in my opinion, looking at numbers, but it's better than seeing a 5%, a 9% inflation in rental prices compared to June of last year. And again, to just double check here, this is data from, I believe, May. So this could appear in the next CPI report, uh, which is good to know, 0 0.9. Again, it depends on what the surveys from the Federal Reserve will look like, uh, but in terms of data, this is what we have from more detailed companies. Global container freight rates. This is also very important. We saw the cost of goods, we saw the cost of services. This is another service cost that has a lot of influence on your cost of buying stuff. If it is very expensive to ship stuff also to the supermarket, you're gonna pay for it. What is the cost of shipping? The cost of shipping is at an all-time low if you look at the past couple of years. September 2021 was the highest point. These are global costs, but of course it influences also the American costs. These are in US dollars. In September 2021, the rates were at $10,000, over $10,000 per container. Now we are at 1,740. That is more than an 80% drop in two years. This is definitely deflation. This is good to know because it will affect all the other goods. We see the trend in many other, let's say, reports. This is Fredo's data. 11,000 was the cost here. Now we are at 1,300. Same kind of, I mean, some will show a better decline, a slower decline, depending on the markets. Why is this happening? Because of supply and demand. The load activity fell 14%, the largest drop of a year. This is from a specific company. In this case, it's uh, uh, Boise, Idaho, Truck Stop Systems. Where it says, okay, Truck Stop Systems has the data in this case. Total load activity fell 14%, the largest drop of a year so far, following a decrease of nearly 8% in previous week. Volume was almost 41% down computer last week, uh, the, the same week of last year. So the trends that we're seeing is uh, slowdown in demand, slowdown in trucking, which is dropping rates for freight, ship, uh, trucking. In some cases, I saw some trucking companies uh, actually incurring losses because uh, their trucking costs are higher than the profit margin, than the profit, sorry, which is could be very negative on the long term. I believe it will adjust a little bit. The fact is we're back to a normal level in terms of transportation costs. We're back at a more normal level in terms of gas costs and petrol costs. We're back on a more normal level, even though I believe there's still some room to go with food prices. And if you look at apartments, we're now on a more stable, let's say, trend. I hope that we will not have a gigantic inflation in demand that will might, that might skyrocket rent prices even more like we saw in the past couple of years. Generally speaking, we either saw deflationary trends or if we saw inflationary trends, they were lower than the 2% target rate, which is good. This is not financial advice. This is simply a general opinion that we are building from what we're seeing here. There's many more data points uh, and the way data here is calculated it could be different than what the Federal Reserve looks at, the data points that the Federal Reserve looks and uh, use it for their calculations. But uh, looking at this, in my opinion, I repeat, not financial advice, do your research, 
it seems that the next CPI report uh, might yield uh, a lower inflation than we saw in April. Remember, next CPI report uh, that will be released uh, next week, I believe, or a little bit over next week, uh, will be for the May, for the month of May, not the month of June. The data we saw partially includes June, partially includes May. Um, but generally speaking, the trends are looking pretty good. Let's see what happens. Let's see if I was right or if I was wrong. My fault is that the next CPI report will be better than the past one. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have other data points that you would like to discuss uh, and if your calculations or thoughts uh, are similar to mine or differ completely. Thank you for watching. And if you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe. Ciao.